At the end of 2018, I did a video on what was then the current state of Tesla's autopilot assisted driving system. It's been one year since that video. This car can now do things that it didn't used to be able to do. And in things it didn't do very well, it does a lot better. Now, according to Elon Musk, full self-driving will be feature complete by the end of this month. I don't know what that means. This car doesn't seem like it's gonna be driving itself anytime soon, but it can do some cool stuff. And I wanna show you what's improved since last year. This year brought a bunch of new updates to the infotainment system, to the performance, etc. But I'm not talking about any of those things because I already mentioned them in my final review a couple weeks ago, which you should watch here. We're just talking about autopilot. And I'm not explaining the autopilot features from the beginning because I already did that last year as well. It'd be nice to see that video as is because I'm talking about the improvements over last year. And the improvements are slight, but numerous. The newest and most meme-worthy feature is Smart Summon. If you open the Tesla app on your smartphone, you can have the car come pick you up by your phone's GPS location, pressing the Come to Me button. Or you can enter a sub-menu and choose within a boundary of reason where the vehicle can navigate to on its own. Now, you do have to hold the button down, which means the vehicle can't navigate anywhere without your vision. And you're really gonna want line of sight on the car at all times because the car takes the shortest route possible. It doesn't really have any regard for parking lot etiquette. It drives on the wrong side. It drives over parking spots. It drives uncomfortably close to other vehicles. I'm talking within inches. It does seem to be at least moderately safe. It's very, very cautious of people. It just doesn't drive like a person would. And so the end result is something like this where it has to back up or reroute. Ah, it gets so close <laughs> to other cars, taking the shortest route and easiest route possible. This means that in crowded parking lots, it becomes a real problem because the vehicle will sometimes just seize up in the middle of the parking lot and refuse to move. It's happened to me in a parking lot. It was so embarrassing. I was at the grocery store, the car stopped going, and then it tried to refigure out where it was, but ended up giving up. It is inches away from the Subaru, by the way. Elon Musk says that if a car can navigate through the parking lot, then it should be relatively easy to drive on the road because parking lots have tons of unexpected variables, uh, unknowns, obstacles, people, and so driving on a street is pretty easy by comparison. Of course, driving in a parking lot has far less severe consequences than, say, running a red light. Is this a fun party trick? Yeah. Is it anything other than a party trick? I mean, come on, right now, no. Maybe someday, but it's been out for several months and it's still at a point where it's essentially unusable. Autopilot is really designed to be used on the highway. Now, unlike GM Super Cruise and a couple of other lane keeping softwares that truly don't work in the city, Autopilot does, so long as there are distinct lines on the ground. Now, one thing they added this year was stoplight and stop sign recognition. The problem is it is very, very spotty. We've been trying for a while now and we can't get it to see a single stop sign. There's one right here. Let's see if it goes. Oh my gosh, we're gonna run it. Oh! <laughs> it worked, it worked. <laughs> We've been trying for a long time. Now it doesn't actually stop the car and it won't stop at a red light. It just says, hey, you're gonna run one, but it truly only works probably 10 or 20% of the time. Now, I expect that it's there to teach the car about the neural nets, and that's just one side bonus to users. But it's weird to advertise a feature that's so weirdly unreliable. On the other hand, some intersections like this one, which a year ago I could have never gotten through to save my life, because there's a bunch of lanes that are kind of errant. We're underneath a freeway interpass here. This car now does generally fine. Generally. <laughs> <laughs> it's still trying to take that other lane at the very last minute, but it did a pretty good job and I didn't disengage autopilot. A year ago, it would have never made it through that intersection safely. So weird lanes that are all over the place, unmarked items, it just handles a lot better. One thing that was a huge problem for autopilot that still isn't fantastic, but is getting better and better every day is handling zipper merges. These are things that we do all of the time. People are actually generally pretty bad at them and they're the source of a lot of traffic. This car used to just get fixated on the lane that it was in and always center itself when a merge began to happen, cutting people off in the process. 
Now it actually respects most zipper merges. It lets people enter your lane, lets people exit your lane, and gives them breathing room. It's still not perfect when there are multiple lanes of space. For example, if you're in one lane and two lanes over, there's someone else and you both want to enter the same lane, uh, this car won't recognize the other car until it's already entered the other lane, which if you're in that lane too, could be very close to a collision. You still have to watch the car. Some lane changes it makes are stupid and donkey brained, but majority of the time, it really does a pretty good job. And in traffic like this, it's nice to just be able to sit back and chill while other vehicles have to, well, watch how fast they're going. Pay attention. I think I left my book back here. Up here, there is what has almost always been a problem for this car. Although every update, it gets a little better and I honestly haven't tried it yet. It's a four leaf clover interchange. There's traffic entering the freeway and we need to get into the same lane to go into a very slow 25 miles per hour ramp. The car has never done it successfully. There's a lot of traffic. It's now prompting me to change the lane. So it's saying I'm going to change. I have to wiggle the steering wheel and it's going to try to turn right now. There we go. Now, do, will it enter? If it does, I will be blown away. Guys, you just did it. Now, I did have a car in front of me to slow me down, which may have helped a little bit. If we were going 70 miles an hour, I'm not sure the car would have slowed down in time, but that's the first time it has ever done this well. I'm not gonna go out and say that it was perfect. It was still a little eh, hit or miss, but it gets better all the time. And it's pretty cool to get an update and to go through something that Autopilot has never been able to do and then just one day see that it works and then never remember that it was ever a problem. It's a pretty cool system and it's only getting better with time. Do I think Tesla Autopilot is the best driver assist system? Yeah, I do. I've driven many of them. GM Super Cruise, Hyundai's new system, Audi's new system, and they're fine. I mean, they, they work, but they don't have the reliability, the feature set, and the versatility of Autopilot, especially on city streets like this. Do I think full self-driving is around the corner? No. Do I think it's coming this year? No. Next year? No. Do I think it's feature complete? I don't even know what that means. But what I do know is that this car is better at driving itself today than it has ever been. And next year, when I do another video, it's gonna be better than, than it is now. And that's really cool. Does it make it worth the $7,000 price tag? I think so. It's what makes this car so fun and exciting. Well, folks, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, that other button seems to work okay too. Get subscribed for more awesome videos like these. Uh, watch the road. <laughs> and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.